I hope you're ready, Trigger. Ready for what? Intel says that Baron Ironblood's forces are approaching our position. Be on the lookout. Who the fuck is Baron Russ Bucket? I said Baron Ironblood, sworn enemy of the Action Force and leader of the Red Shadows. Have you been drinking again, Roberts? No, why do you ask that? Because I ain't never heard of no Baron Russ Bucket. And shadows are shades of grey, they ain't red, you dummy. So who are we fighting then? Carrick and his garrison troopers. Uh-huh. Look man, get your head out of the 80s and move the times. We've got a real threat out there and they don't dress in bright red. But- But nothing man, if you want to go fight old fashioned enemies like ninjas, then you need to join G.I. Joe. Yeah, I'll pass on that. Good. Because it's time to trade in your rose-colored glasses for some high-tech, night-vision goggles. We've got Swarm to swat. Roger that. What's that, Skippy? Condor's trapped down a mine shaft. What the fuck? I gotta go. Condor's in trouble, and he needs my help. Hold on, Desert Rat. We gotta man this position. Then I'll see you in hell. Dickhead. Series 2B of the Valiverse Action Force toy line consists of two new unique action figures based on hero characters. A new enemy troop builder, a weapons pack, a Big Bad Toy Store exclusive repaint of the hugely popular Series 1 Steel Brigade figure, and a new troop builder with corresponding gear pack, which I believe is the best looking trooper created by Valiverse so far. And in this collector's guide video, I'm going to talk you through each of these figures and all of their corresponding weapons and gear. So stay tuned, because it's time for action. Come with me, toy fans. Hey, toy fans, my name is Tony and. Excuse me. Hello? You're there again, and you're hosting this review without me. I'm sorry, I just. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for action figures, I can tell you that I don't sell them. What I do have is a very particular set of skills. Skills that make me much better at hosting this video than you. If you stop this review now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you, I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will host this video. I'm, I'm out of here. I, I can't work in these conditions. Guy's a fucking psycho. Before we look over the individual troopers, there are a couple of things worth mentioning about Action Force Series 2B as a whole. The first of which is the change to the box design. When compared to Series 1 and Series 2A, you'll notice that the figure boxes are now slimmer, and Valiverse achieved this by removing the figure stands from the blister, and simply placing them in a Ziploc bag and taping them behind the plastic blister. The slimmer profile of the boxes allows Valiverse to keep shipping costs down, which is one of the reasons why the company's been able to maintain its cost per figure, while other companies are consistently increasing their prices. The other thing worth mentioning is that the issues with the Series 1 figures, such as a few tight joints here and there, the tightness of the peg holes in the feet, and the difficulty closing the vest tabs, have all been rectified. Valiverse took note of the issues on Series 1 and listened to the consumer, and now with the second half of Series 2, they have delivered a pitch-perfect action figure product. Other companies in the market have well-known quality control issues that date back years, and they've shown no signs of trying to fix the problem. Well, this isn't the case with Valiverse, and it's this dedication to customer satisfaction that makes this company one of the best in the market today. Kicking off Series 2B, we have Austin Buchanan, the machine gun-toting Action Force Staff Sergeant, codename Trigger. Hailing from Fort Riley, Kansas, Trigger has become a trusted ally to Condor within the Action Force ranks, and this is one badass looking character. With his Oakley's backwards baseball cap and beard, Trigger has a very unique look that gives off the vibe of an elite military contractor type, and the Action Force logo on the back of the cap is an excellent little added detail. Trigger carries the same webbing system as Virgin 2 Sergeant Slaughter, albeit this time the belt kit has been produced in a coyote tan colour, and Trigger carries a saw light machine gun. And while we did receive a version of this weapon system in Weapons Pack Bravo, Trigger's machine gun has some nice painted details which give it a camouflage look. When you display Trigger next to Sergeant Slaughter, Condor, Duster and Rollout, you can immediately see the diversity in character design among the Action Force heroes, and he's quickly becoming one of my favourites. If you've been watching this channel at all over the last year, you'll know that Desert Rat 
is actually based on me and the way that I used to wear my uniform and equipment when I served in Iraq. And before I get into the details of the figure, I thought I'd offer you a bit of a backstory to the Desert Rat action figure, because there's a lot of history to cover. Firstly, the reason that Valiverse opted to produce this figure's packaging in a red, yellow and blue colour scheme is because it harkens back to the original Palatoy Action Force toy line that ran from 1982 to 1985. And the codename Desert Rat was used by one of the three and three quarter inch scaled action figures that appeared in Palatoy's first wave of figures. I now have a number of loose examples of this action figure in my collection, as well as a single carded version. And I feel extremely lucky to own this because there are only around six carded examples known to exist in the entire world. But Desert Rat's history goes back even further than this, because the Palatoy figure that was released in 1982 was actually based on a 12 inch Action Man outfit that first hit toy shops in 1980 the Long Range Desert Group set. This uniform consisted of shirt, shorts, tall socks and Arabian headdress. And here Action Man is equipped with webbing and an entrenching tool and armed with a commando dagger, hand grenades and a Thompson machine gun. And the Long Range Desert Group figure represents the British soldiers that fought against the German war machine in the North African campaign of World War II. This is a very popular yet hard to find vintage Palatoy Action Man outfit and I've been lucky enough to have two nice loose examples in my collection for many years. And I was always a huge fan of this Palatoy Action Man set. So when Bobby Valor brought me into the Valiverse Action Force toy line as Desert Rat, I couldn't believe that A, a figure based on my likeness was actually gonna be created at all, and B, that the figure's code name could be traced back to my favorite toy line of all time, Palatoy's Action Man. Since becoming this Action Force character, I have set out to build the best Desert Rat collection in the world and alongside loose and carded examples of both the Action Man and Action Force versions of this figure. I also have a vintage box bubble bath bottle because the artwork depicts the Desert Rat character, as well as an original paint master of the Valiverse version that was gifted to me by toy designer and Valiverse president Bobby Valor, along with a production sample of the figure that is equipped with a bunch of test shot parts. And finally, issue eight of the Action Force Mission Files comic that features the first comic appearance of Desert Rat and I will forever cherish this copy that was personalized to me and signed by Mr. Bobby Valor himself. Now let's conduct a closer inspection of the new Valiverse Action Force Desert Rat figure. When Valiverse was developing this figure, they only had a handful of reference photos. So a lot of the design elements were pulled from images like this one. And many people have asked me why the head sculpt is based on how I look today and not the bearded look that I wore in Iraq circa 2009. Well, that's because this Action Force story is set in 2028. So when Bobby and I were kind of working out some of the details of the character's backstory, it made sense that he would look older so that he could fit in with this fictional timeline. And as someone who has to look at this ugly mug in the mirror every day, I can say that Valiverse absolutely nailed the likeness here. It looks so cool. You like it? I like that one better. I like the real one. <laughs> no, but that looked amazing. So you think Bobby did a good job? He did a, he did a great job, actually. All the detail and everything. No, that looks so cool. I'm also totally blown away by the level of detail that Valiverse was able to put into the sleeve tattoo. This is an intricately detailed tattoo with several different colors used. And I imagine this would be difficult to recreate in a one to one scale, let alone shrinking it down to the one to 12 scale. The koi fish and the flowers are all present and correct. And the fact that Bobby Valor was able to apply this tattoo to the figure so perfectly makes him a fucking rock star of the toy design industry. I think a lot of other toy companies would have completely avoided the challenge of trying to create this tattoo in the 1 to 12 scale and would have just given Desert Rat long sleeves instead. But that's not how Valiverse does things. The body armor issue to this figure is the same one that we got with Duster, although Desert Rats has been produced in a dark tan color instead of green. And while this is based on the 511 tactical plate carrier that Tim Kennedy wears, I wore this plate carrier made by a company called Paraclete. And they look so similar that it never made sense for Valiverse to splash out on new tooling to recreate the Paraclete version. Another item that didn't require new tooling is the Gerber strong arm knife that also came with Duster. When I served in the SAS, I always carried this Swedish Special Forces knife. And while it's not the same as the one that Duster carries, it's close enough for toy purposes. On the chest of the plate carrier, we have the Union Jack flag. And even though I wore a tan version of this flag when I was in Iraq, I told Bobby after the figure reveal during Iconicon 2021 that toys always need at least a little pop of color to help them stand out on the display shelf. So I wanted him to keep the Union Jack in full color. Behind the knife on the body armor, there is also an area for a unit badge. 
and I remember Bobby asking me what symbol I'd like to have here, and I opted against the SAS badge because I would never wear that into combat. So instead I showed him a photo of my old team badge that I wore the last few years I was serving in Iraq, and suggested that the palm tree would look good in that location, and I think it works really well. I've seen a number of Desert Rat Review videos on YouTube now, and a few of them were somewhat critical about the awkward way that the backpack sits against the radio on the back of the plate carrier. Well the thing is, most military equipment is either heavy, cumbersome or awkward to carry. And while the radio on the figure does make the backpack sit on a slight angle, this is exactly how I used to carry my equipment in Iraq. So in that respect, it is very accurate to real life. As is the rifle, because I carried a heavily modified M4 in Iraq, and Valiverse have done an expert job at recreating this in the 1-12 to scale. I fitted this rifle with both an ACOG sight and rear flip-up iron sights, as well as a shorter barrel, as that was better for getting in and out of vehicles and moving through buildings. This is a very reliable weapon system, and one that filled me with confidence when I carried it outside the wire. The Valiverse version of Desert Rat is also issued with the same belt and pistol as Duster, and while these photos show that my pistol was not worn on the belt, it isn't quite a drop leg holster either, because I preferred to carry my pistol in more of a low slung western style but that doesn't mean that the toy version is inaccurate. Over the years I was serving in Iraq, I frequently changed the type of equipment I was carrying and where I was carrying it on my body, due to various mission-specific requirements. An excellent example is shown in this photo, where I'm actually carrying my pistol on the chest of my body armour and not on the belt. I'm also genuinely grateful that the Action Force Quartermaster has issued this Desert Rat figure with an updated pistol in the form of the 509 Edge, because I was never a huge fan of the Glock 17 that I carried in Iraq. Rounding out Desert Rat's equipment, we have the drop leg medical pouch that a lot of other Action Force figures carry. And while this may seem like a simple toy accessory, in reality, these individual med kits are essential to the survivability of wounded troops on the battlefield. Once you undo the clip on the med pouch, you'll notice this red tag at the top. Give that a pull and the pouch rips away from the Velcro. And then you can put the med pouch anywhere you want and you're not constantly reaching down to your thigh to get the equipment you need. In order to manage battlefield trauma, I recommend carrying as a minimum two tourniquets, two chest seals, a nasal pharyngeal for managing blocked airways, a heavy gauge cannula for releasing the pressure of a tension pneumothorax, a scalpel, a pair of lockable forceps, a first field dressing, and finally, a heavy duty pair of scissors for cutting through clothing and equipment. And once again, you guys just thought you were watching a toy review. I couldn't be happier with the action figure that Valiverse has produced in my likeness, and I feel they've created a very exciting character that is a ton of fun to collect. And the figure strikes the perfect balance between real world accuracy and toyetic design. While I remain uncertain if Bobby Valor will ever create a version 2 figure, if he does, I really hope he makes a heavy weapons version of Desert Rat that carries the Mag 58 machine gun, with the name Lucifer painted on the side. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a story for another video. Action Force will return after these messages. Action Force Toys, the battle has just begun. Driver, Action Force! Build your armies with the new Action Force toy line. Combine the Swarm with the Scarabs and Wasp Raiders to create an elite private military unit. Or build your Steel Brigade and deck out the troops with different weapons and equipment. Gather your garrison so that Kerrick can go on a bloodthirsty rampage. Or collect the Delta Troopers so Duster doesn't have to outflank the Swarm on his own. And now introducing the all new Action Force Nightops team, featuring Nightops Desert Rat, Nightops Condor and Nightops Steel Brigade. In this war, there's no room for pets. Action Force figures are so full of testosterone that collecting them will put hairs on your chest. Use your action points to send away for the all new Action Force vehicle, the Butt Bobby Buggy, complete with Mag 58 machine gun that will be coming with Desert Rat version two. If you want figures that go commando in every sense of the word, then collect your own Action Force today. Figures each sold separately from Valiverse. Now back to Action Force. Series 2B also offers us another enemy troop builder figure that represents the frontline soldiers in Kerak's formidable army. The garrison cavalry wear a grey uniform with maroon accents, and we have seen most of this equipment before, but similar to the way Valiverse created the rollout figure, the colour choices used make this figure look totally unique from all the other figures to be released in the line so far. 
What is new to the Garrison Cavalry is the G36 assault rifle, and this has been expertly produced in the 1 to 12 scale. Along with the cavalry face shield that clips onto the standard issue Action Force helmet, and can be raised or lowered, just like that of a jousting knight. Karak was one of the standout characters from Series 1, and it is thrilling to finally be able to display him with a small army of Garrison Cavalry troops. Series 2A did not provide us with any generic troop builder figures, so it's fantastic to see them return in this wave, and I think the Series 2B troop builder is the best one yet. Series 1 of Action Force presented us with the Urban Trooper, the Riot Trooper, and the Spec Ops Trooper, with the Urban and Riot Troopers also being offered corresponding gear packs. And these faceless operatives have afforded collectors almost countless customising options when building their various rank and file teams. And the versatility incorporated into these troop builders has made them hugely popular among collectors. For Series 2B, Valiverse have created the Delta Trooper and Delta gear set. And I know I'm not alone when I say this is the coolest looking Action Force Trooper produced to date. Utilising much of the same equipment that was issued to Duster, and being armed with this awesome looking M4 rifle complete with suppressor, it's the colour scheme that really makes these troopers pop on a display shelf. If you're a fan of the Delta Trooper and Delta gear set, then do not sleep on them. When I spend a couple of days packing orders at Valiverse HQ, I can tell you that collectors are buying these figures in bulk quantities, and I guarantee you that the Delta sets will be the first Series 2B products to sell out. So head over to the Valiverse.com website and place your order now. Link is in the video description below. Series 2B also sees the Action Force Armoury getting restocked with tons of new small arms, thanks to Weapons Pack Charlie. This set includes a number of repainted rifles, as well as some brand new submachine guns, with this one being ideally suited to the Delta Trooper. I also really like the Desert Tan paint job on the M4 rifle, and I use this to recreate a custom Condor, and I call this Flashback Condor, and imagine that this is how he dressed when he served in the SAS with Desert Rat. Weapons Pack Charlie includes 17 pieces, and at a price of $12.99 US, it is some of the best value on the market when it comes to 1-12 to scaled figure accessories. In addition to the Weapons Pack, Series 2B also brings us the frequently asked for stand pack. Much has already been made of the excellently designed Action Force figure stands, from the assorted peg positions, to the cool checker plate steel look, to the incorporated groove for displaying the file cards. These stands have been a big hit with collectors right from the start. And now for the very low cost of $10 a pack, you can grab four extra figure stands that come in a variety of different colours, including black, desert tan, olive green and swarm yellow. Rounding out Series 2B, we have the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Night Ops Steel Brigade figure. And the colour scheme on this figure is absolute dynamite. When I collected G.I. Joe during my childhood, I wasn't often a fan of figure repaints, but there were exceptions to that rule. For example, I didn't like the Tiger Force, the Python Patrol, or Slaughter's Marauders. But the G.I. Joe Night Force range was amazing, because the new colour pattern designs made most of the figures look better than their original versions. And that is what Valiverse have achieved with this exclusive version of Steel Brigade. They've taken one of the most popular figures from Series 1, and given them a new paint job to create one of the coolest figures in the entire line. And if you want to pick a few of them up, you'll find a link to Big Bad Toy Store in the video description below. While not officially part of Series 2B, there are two other exclusive Valiverse products that I want to discuss. The first of which is the JoeFest exclusive Sergeant Slaughter with cloth goods jacket. This extremely limited run of only 100 figures have all been signed by the man himself, and these figures are highly desirable for both Action Force collectors and fans of Sergeant Slaughter. Finally, we have the prototype assortment of all six Series 1 core character figures. And while this item does have an expensive price tag attached, I'm a sucker for this type of item. The only way to purchase these figures is in a complete set of six, and they come supplied in a unique Valiverse shipping case. And while this is called the prototype assortment, the figures are actually test shots, not prototypes. But it is fascinating to see each of these figures in their unpainted form. I have long been interested in studying the toy design process. That is why some of my favorite pieces in my collection are prototypes and test shot parts. And that is why this set is so appealing to me. I just love this type of stuff. Take Sergeant Slaughter as an example. I asked designer Bobby Valor why he had a flesh coloured crotch piece, because I thought it would have made the paintwork easier if it had been moulded in the same colour plastic as the leg components. But what I hadn't considered was the type of plastic being used. The parts that make up the leg are manufactured from PVC plastic, whereas the crotch is made from ABS. 
so the components had to be tooled along with the torso, and therefore they've been produced in the same flesh tone colours. Each individual package in this set also has the exclusive gold foil 1 of 100 sticker on it, and I applied all of these stickers with my own hands just a few days before JoeFest 2022. I'm uncertain if all the exclusive Sergeant Slaughters and prototype assortment sets were sold at JoeFest, but if there are any left, I'm sure they'll be going up for sale on the Valiverse website at some point in the near future. And the best way to ensure you get notified is to go to the Valiverse website and sign up for the newsletter. While I don't have any issue with parts reuse in action figure toy lines, I mean all of the major companies do it, I do think that at this point in Valiverse's Action Force journey, it's time to bring us some newly tooled products. And they're doing exactly that with Action Force Series 3, which is an all-female wave, and aside from a handful of weapons that have appeared in some of the weapons packs, all of the figures and accessories are brand new sculpts. But even with that, I do hope we see a new male body type for the eventual Series 4 release of this groundbreaking action figure range. Valiverse's Action Force toy line is expanding at such a rapid rate, I'm starting to run out of room in my display cases. But that's not me complaining. This company is bringing me the type of modern action figures that I've always wanted. Excellent sculpts, amazing articulation, accurate military spec weapons and equipment, and a storyline that I've quickly become invested in, with interesting characters and plenty of action and intrigue. And I can't wait to see what the future holds for this line. All of Series 2B is still in stock on the Valiverse website, as is Series 2A, but they won't last forever, especially that alley-looking Delta Trooper. So make sure you head over to the Valiverse.com website and place your order today. When I remind myself that Action Force Series 1 was only delivered in December of last year, it blows my mind to see how much quality product Valiverse has gotten into the hands of collectors in the last eight months. This line is the new hotness in 1 to 12 scale action figure collecting, and the future looks Action Force as fuck. To check out some of our other Action Force mission files, you can click the links up here. And don't forget to head over to the Valiverse.com website and sign up for the newsletter, so you don't miss out on any valuable intelligence coming from Action Force headquarters. My codename is Desert Rat, and you squeezers are dismissed.